Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> um, let me start by saying this evening, <laughs> I will not be talking much. I lost my voice first time in decades that I lost my voice. Where, where is it? I don't know, but it better come back soon because this is how we make money. So the boss will be talking more tonight than me. Well, you just won't talk as loud. Uh, no, I won't that? be talking. <laughs> so greetings to everybody, wherever you are around the world. I'm Dr. Willie Jolly. And this is Dee. And we're the authors of the book, you can tell them. Make love, make money, make it last. Ten secrets to help shape a great marriage. Why do we have a great marriage? Because you're always right. Yeah, right. Uh, we've been married for how long? A long time. Oh, not long enough. That's the right answer. How long has it been? 38 years. I know you're testing me because I never remember. And we haven't had an argument in... Since yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. That destroys our brand. Oh, our brand. Oh, I forgot. We haven't had an argument in 45 years. <laughs> you this know, what happens when you let me talk. I should let her talk. <laughs> she just messed it all up. <laughs> She'll come up with whatever's on the top of her head. We've been married 38 years, haven't had an argument in over 36 years now. And is that true or not? That is true. The first okay. two years were a challenge. Yeah, very challenging. But we learned some wise principles from some wise mentors. And we put it in a book. And the book has helped marriages. And oh, tell about the lady. Tell her, tell them about the lady on Friday. Friday night. It was Friday afternoon, really. Friday So evening. Willie spoke for, Willie was, we were at the National Press Club where Willie was invited to speak by Pam Perry PR, wonderful uh, lady. She had a seminar called Speak, Sell, and Shine. And there were people there from, from all over the, the country and Willie was the closing speaker and a really good group of people. And one of the participants who's from Atlanta, I think, said to me, I watch your, I watch your program and you help save my marriage. So I was like, ah, okay, so after this is over, you got to tell me about it. And in the midst of her explaining it to me, he pulled me away so that we could sell products. But anyway, she was explaining about the how the communication aspect of it, along with some other very specific things, helped her. Her mate didn't initially read the information or, or wouldn't listen, but it changed her. And in changing her, it helped their relationship. She said to me, she came up to me and said, your book and your program saved my marriage. Wow. Our book and our program. So we are grateful. So we want to encourage everybody. If you know somebody, a couple who are struggling, it might be you, but if you know any couple that's struggling in their marriage, encourage them to go to Jolly Marriage. Get two copies of the book, one for each of them. Watch the TED Talk on jollymarriage.com and let the book and the TED Talk and this show do what we pray that it would do and we intended it to do. Save a million marriages. Enhance a million marriages. So as a result of me having a cold on Friday and speaking, my voice is gone. Where did it go? I don't know, but I sure hope it comes back soon. 
I got to get my voice back. So thank you, Terrence here. He said, rest your voice, Doc. So I'm going to let the boss talk more tonight. Okay, so this is a holiday. This yes. is in some areas. Yes. It's a federal holiday. And I said to you, it's Columbus Day and it's Indigenous People Day. And somebody else said, when I was saying that to them, they were, you, they was like, well, no, it's Indigenous People's Day and not Columbus Day. So, of course, I had to do some research. It is still Columbus Day in some areas, and it is also Indigenous People Day. Now, there's a controversy because did Columbus discover America like it didn't exist before? So we know that that's not quite so. So there's been an ongoing controversy, and depending upon where you are in the United States, where you live, Columbus Day might be a federal holiday for you, right? Or state holiday with pay. It could be no different than any other Monday. It depends upon where you live, okay? So about two de decades ago, the states individually began to really evaluate how important it is and whether or not it needed to be a public holiday. And some states like California and Delaware dropped the holiday entirely in 2009. How about that? Isn't that something? Wow. I, I, I'm, I'm a history buff. So they dropped it entirely. And D.C. renamed the day Indigenous People Day in 2019. So we have a day off, but it's not called Columbus Day. It's called Indigenous People Day. And so it's still kind of ongoing discussion. But that's the, that's the backdrop of it. But it doesn't matter for us because we're not federal employees, right? And so we work all the time anyway. All right. So can you tell us what our topic is for this evening, which would came out of our Friday program so at the National Press Club? I will speak sparingly because of my voice. Gentlemen at the press club. While you were giving your presentation about the value of speaking, the credibility factor and all of that, asked you raise his hand to ask a question before the end of the program as you were wrapping up. He asked the question, what do you do when you want to start a speaker business or any other business and your spouse does not support you in that effort, what do you do? And I told him. The short answer was. <clears throat> and the short answer was. He was losing his voice then too. That you have to change their thinking. You can't force them into it. You can't make them support you. But just like you lead a horse to water, you can't make them drink but you certainly can salt the oats. That's what I did with this one. Are you saying I'm a horse? <laughs> He's saying I'm a horse. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Will anyway. You let me loose? If you go loose, I'm going with you, okay? <laughs> so when we got married, she was not an entrepreneur, had no interest in being an entrepreneur. Tell them why. Because I have security issues. And? That's enough. How about your parents? Well, my pa I, I grew up being an entrepreneur. So we had a grocery store, we had a laundromat, we had a hair salon, everybody worked 24 seven. No vacations? No, they enjoyed, they enjoyed it. They were together all the time. All the time. So I did I was not privy to that part of it. all I saw was that we worked all the time. My brother and I, we worked at the grocery store. We helped with the hair salon. I didn't do anything at the at, at the laundromat or, or the barbershop. But my goal was to get an education and get a white college job. Good government job. I, I didn't know that term then, but a white college job was what I said. And what she did. Mm -hmm. When we got married, she was 
actually working for her father's church. Mm -hmm. But that was because I went back home because I had lost my job here. My last, I had taught school. Then I became a, a training director for an association, which was a bit of a challenge. The first and only place where I'd been fired from. So to lick my wounds, I went home. Right. I courted her long distance. Now, we didn't start long distance, but after we had established her. And we got married. And she came back, worked for a law firm. And got recruited to work on Capitol Hill. Then went on Capitol Hill. Good government job. Did you know that when the government shuts down, the congressmen still get paid? That's in your craw. She says that to me every day. Uh, you have to think about this. There's no sense of urgency to help the people who the ordinary government workers, they can argue, the congressmen and senators can argue forever because they're still getting paid. There's something wrong. Yes. That's disingenuous. Okay, back on the topic. Okay. And so I said, I'm going to start this speaking business. I want you to come work with me. She said, oh, no, absolutely not. But she didn't discourage me from starting it. And I was supportive and I carried the health insurance. Correct. And I didn't have a fax machine. I would go down to her office sometime and use the fax machine. But I needed her. I carried the health insurance. <laughs> and so... I had the regular paycheck. <laughs> I had to convince her to see my point of view. I carried the health insurance. <laughs> and I, what I did was, I didn't try and make her come. I influenced her to change her thinking. There was a, a audio cassette tape called The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. And I listened to it. And I listened to it over and over again. And then one day I got an idea. I should get her to listen to it. But I didn't go to her and say, you need to listen to this tape. Bad idea. That would have been an idea. I was wise enough to say to her, baby, I thought this tape by Earl Nightingale was outstanding. It was incredible. But I like your opinion. Stroke your ego. And she listened. And then she listened again. And again and again and again. So this was not an overnight process. No. Then I read a book. Think and Grow Rich. And I said, baby, I think that this is a great book, but I want your opinion. And she read it over and over again. Now, I'm going to take a moment and stop for a moment to give a shout out to Olympia there in the Caribbean, Royal Caribbean cruise from Hawaii. <laughs> and... Uh, Thank you for what a great place to be. <laughs> I thought about y'all. Tell Ronnie my voice is gone, but I thought about y'all. And there's our, our son is on to Delatoro McNeil the second, our other son, and uh, peak performance expert, keynote, conference host, recently inducted into the Speaker Hall of Fame. I got the honor of indu in inducting him on the night I got the cabinet. He got the Hall of Fame. And I'm so, I'm so proud of Mr. I'm so proud Dr. Delatoro. I'm McNeil. so proud of him. So proud of him. He's an, if you never heard him speak, he's one of the greatest keynote speakers on the planet. So uh, on TV a lot. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna let her talk. Y'all see his struggle here. Um, go ahead. Tell what. Tell about how I convinced you. You tell the rest well, of the Well, it was over time. It was over which time. Is, which is what you did not get. You gave the gentleman a very short answer. I had a short time. Friday, because you were simply saying, you've got to sell them. That's really what you were saying. You've got to sell your mate. But or, how you convinced them by 
stroke their ego. You gotta stroke their ego. Now, having said that, that's that's the basics of what you said. My approach, thinking about that, would have been a little different because I would have asked the question as to tell why. Now, let me go into my take on it. Okay. <clears throat> so, why do you think your partner might not be supportive? You got to find out. That's what I'm saying. You have to find out. So you, we can jump into, well, this is how you get them to convince them, but they might have some other issues that are going on that you're going to have to address. Like number one, communication. There might be a general lack of communication between the two of you. When, when you said to me, D, you can help me do this business. I need you. I was already helping you. I understood a little bit of all of the things that you had to do. So I was supportive of you. So this wasn't like something that was, oh my God, out of the blue, what on earth are you doing? Well, I really didn't know the details of what you were doing, how it was all put together, but I was supportive of you from the beginning. We don't know in the case of, uh, of the gentleman who asked the question of you, what the communication is between him and his spouse. Or does she even understand what it is that he's talking about doing? So number one, there's communication issues. Number two, there could be some insecurity. Now, okay, so he's like, I'm rah-rah. I'm ready to go out and live my dream. And, and, and she might be thinking, so, so what does that mean for what we have now? How does this change the landscape? They probably have not talked about that, okay? Sometimes a partner might feel threatened by the change and what it will do to their relationship. Will the spouse's new success make changes in their relationship? Maybe they have a certain way of doing things now. Like we had somebody who had the question of, well, my, my, remember that one my, my spouse has gotten is I, I encouraged her to go back to school to get all these degrees. Now she doesn't have time for me. She's working on a PhD, yada, yada, you know? So there could be feelings of, of insecurity there where, okay, this new position, your, your new life, what does this mean for me? Are you leaving me behind? Mm. Next thing, financial. Pursuing this new speaking, how much money does this cost? What's the outlet? You got to have things I didn't understand. It. You got to have a website. You got to have the social media. You got to have somebody to help you do all this. You got to get a book. You got it for credibility. You got all these things. Where, where is this money coming from? We already have a budget. Or do we have a budget? Or am I feeling like you're going to take money from what we're already doing? We're barely making it to now put this money over here for something new. And I don't know if you're going to make money with it. Still goes back to what? Communication. So now we got financial issues. Can you afford to do this? Are you prime in the pump? Are you making money from the beginning? Or how much money are you going to have to invest before we can make money? Sometimes you, you, you can't really articulate that. And then personal priorities. What does that simply mean for me in terms of, okay, now you're going to pursue your dream <laughs> Does that mean you're going to be traveling? Does that mean that now I got, I'm the sole responsibility of taking the kids, schlepping the kids from this private school to this private school? When you started traveling, I slept the kids. I, I was the one. They didn't go to the same schools. I did a private school over here. I did a private school there. And when, and when William even was in high school and we were looking at colleges, you were on travel. And I carted it from this one overnight program to here as we search for schools. But we were on the same page because of our ability to communicate. And I supported you because of how you made me feel that I was an integral part of this. Your success Say that was again. my that's, success. That's big. That's big. Say that again. I don't want you to blow by that. Say that again. You made me feel an integral part of the total success. And your success was my success. And so we were in that together. And then again, it goes back to communicating. So before I'm saying we can even get to, okay, you're going to sell them. You're going to eat. 
We have to communicate about those underlying issues to find out what their why and what their challenge is. Taryn said, bravo on that point. Folks, that's the big point. I want y'all to, I don't want to blow by this. This is really important because I wanted Dee to say it. I worked hard on making her secure that I'm going to share with her the vision. But that was only after I helped her develop the mindset. So first is mindset, mm -hmm. then is skill set. Always start with mindset. Develop the mindset, the books, your input determines your output, the audio tapes, input determines the output. You got to fill up her mind or his mind with the things that are filling up your mind. Mm -hmm. You have to have same inputs. So if you're reading something and it's a change of thinking, share it with your spouse. Don't tell them they need it. Don't say you need to read this. No, say, well, I like your opinion on this. Bottom line is you just want them to get the information that you got to be strategic. Say, look, I want your opinion. I want your thinking. I respect you. That's what I was saying to her. I respect you. I like your thoughts on this. She listened to the audio tape. Started changing. Started reading the books. Started changing. More and more audio tapes. Og Mandino. She became a fan. I love Og Mandino. and actually met him. At the speakers um, association, he had the softest hand of any man. I still say that that I have ever met. Very gentle spirit. So she became, and a, his books are only nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and worth every penny. Uh, Terrence said, "How can two walk together unless they agree to walk together?" Right. But we thought it in putting the same inputs, and so you can't speak two different languages. So the key is communicating. And, and the question might be, well, how do you really communicate? So you have to share your heart. Right. You uh, have to uh, share. Janice Litvin just said something. My husband follows me all over the country and watches all of my presentations. Last week, he even introduced me at Staffing World at American Staffing Association. Here's the question, wow. Janice. I yes. want to get how did you get there? Because some people want to know how you either convinced, influenced. How did you get your husband? Yes. How did okay. you get him to say, I'm in? I how mean, did you part get of your it could husband? be your relationship, mm -hmm. but there has to be some impetus to get him to say, I believe in her and I'm, I'm willing to leave my job or leave my comfort zone to do that. Now we had another friend who, whose wife passed. She never went to one of his presentations. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I get that, Janice. He asked if he could come, but how did you get him to want to come? Okay, did you? So how did, uh, you're saying, was he always <laughs> a supporter of yours? Yeah. Oh, when you, okay. Okay, he wants to experience everything with her. That's good. What a so, great relationship. That's a great relationship. Now, we and want- that says he's, he's also secure in and of, of, of himself. Jim Rohde. Great okay. example. Mm -hmm. Kim Rohde is smart practice. smart practice. He and his wife. His wife was the speaker. So he was in the background and managed the money. You know, you know, I love him. And, and he would go where she went and they would work together and they would travel together. Uh, so again, they made each other feel secure and important. That right. is key. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Brenda <laughs> said you both are a great tag team. Uh, thank you for the information. Um, so uh, uh, let me go to Terrence because he's been saying funny stuff up here. He's been saying uh, he's looking for a woman who, how could you, let's see, my dream is so simple. A wife that makes seven figures, a wife that makes seven figures, a wife that makes seven figures. <laughs> he said he's got his eyes closed. <laughs> okay. All right, folks. This is a very powerful, when the man said that, I knew he was struggling. Oh, he worked the crowd with me. That shows you that he is proud of her. Yes. That's the strength of their relationship. Yes. So I want to encourage people to understand that this is a process that is built on communication. It's built on respect and trust. And it's built on also 
uh, and Dee hit some good points there. Finding out why people are not, if you can find out why, maybe it's insecurity. Maybe it's- So, so that's not- That's just very the, good, Dee. That but that's not good. just asking the question. It, it's kind of what, what I've said from years ago in terms of studying your mate. So this is a gradual thing. So when you say, okay, you got me to leave my my capital you my capital hill job, which is really oh, tell how we got it. I did it though. Tell the truth how I did it. One day a week. Okay, I agree because I told you I had the insurance. Did I, did I tell you I had the good health insurance? Did I say? Did I say I had the? Blue I think you said that somewhere shield, along the way. Health insurance. Did All I right. say that? I think so. Did I say I got paid? I can't, I don't know if it's to do that. I got paid once a month. Did the budget once a month, but I carried the health insurance. So what happened? I said, okay, I'll stick my toe in the water. So Congressman Gallimus' office, Carlotta Scott, shout out to Carlotta Scott, who was the the AA to the congressman agreed to let me work four days a week. Now I was still getting paid full salary. I worked four days a week on Capitol Hill and one day a week with Willie as I tried to figure out what in the world he was doing. I said, okay, right? That's because I was an outstanding employee. I really was because I did a whole bunch of stuff. Even lunch hour, I took my lunch hour late so I could go pick up William from Christian school and bring him back to the office so that I could work six, seven, eight o'clock at night, whatever it took. Then I gradually, so it just happened over six months or so. Then I was like, okay, I'm going to try. I got to four days a week with Willie and one day a week on Capitol Hill. You know they were wonderful people to me. And then with that, then I left. And I still have good relationships with them. Now, when I jumped, that wasn't exactly jumping in, but I did the best I could to try to understand the lay of the land and what Willie's organization And in reality, was it was a Put one day a week with me and four days with them, and then two days with me and three days with them, and three days with me and two days with them, four days with me and one day with them. And finally, it was one toe at a time, but I was willing to work on the process. So Johnny you, Parker, you, my you, great friend, who was on here not, not long ago with his beautiful wife, Bert Leslin, the Jamaican sensation, uh, he said, you sold her. Great, excellent stuff. Charles Carey said, my friend, Sir Charles, a dedicated balance seems to be needed in most relationships, as you described. And uh, Janice again said, I don't doubt that you were an outstanding employee, Dee. You were. But she worked really hard. And that is why she was able to get that latitude. Mm -hmm. Excellence. In my book, Attitude of Excellence, I said, excellence will pave the path for you if you have a reputation for excellence. And people know you're giving your best. You're not slacking. You're doing So they best. were willing to work with me. And we have good relationships with them today. Yes. For those that are that are still there, I mean, many have retired because that was a, a, a long time ago. Yeah. You know. That's so. twenty five years ago. Okay. She's been with me twenty five years. So, folks, it's been a, a great ride, but the best is still yet to come. Y'all gonna see big and bad, great things coming this way. So, mindset first in terms of yes, how to get your spouse on the same page <laughs> with you. And you can't deal with what their mindset is until you understand their why, what is holding, what, what is making them reticent. I like that word. Reticent. reticent. I love that. Thank you. So look, our time is up. Uh, let me say a few things. One, again, my voice has went out. First time in years it's gone out. I was supposed to do my one-man show last weekend. To start, start the one-man the one -man show. show. We canceled last Saturday. We're it's going to start on the October 21st. 21st. Go to thecomebackshow.com. Thecomebackshow.com. Get your tickets. The 21st of October. We're going to start. If you, uh, we're going to start having, we're looking to start having sponsors for this show so we can take it beyond online to broadcast television. We also are excited about the fact that so many people are getting the book and great numbers, so we want you to keep doing that. And then watch the TED Talk on jollymarriage.com. If you get the book, get two copies. And be like that lady we met Friday night who said it changed her marriage. I want to thank all of you for your support. All of you who tell your friends about this program, who tell your- Christmas gifts. Christmas gifts. Because uh, you know, Christmas is out. 
and completely work. We've gone from Halloween to Christmas. Thanks and our uh, speaker media publishing symposium is going to be the weekend before Thanksgiving. Go to jollyrichspeaking.com if you're interested. jollyrichspeaking.com. Uh, we've not done it in, really in full gear since COVID. So this will be the first time we really let it loose and do it all in. Jolly Rich speaking. Jolly Marriage for the TED Talk. And then everybody should go to winwithwilly.com to make sure you get all our resources. Thank you all for your time. Hopefully my voice will be back next week. And I'll be able to talk. <laughs> uh, thank you, Olympia. Y'all travel safe. Tell Ronnie hello. Safe travel. Uh, uh, Senior Terrence. I see. I thought it was a song that got you. I thought you in your imagination and he sang to you. It was a rap. You know, the song helped. The song you know, a lot of people loops. say that, but he, he didn't sing to me. He doesn't sing to me. The lady song, though, that night. You did say that. But Lady. I can't do it. No. A real night oh, and oh, oh, no, no, no. And I that song you. you're saying when you were playing the drums. He said playing. that's what he referred to. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. But no, it took almost a year after that. But I was wise long enough to time. say, I got to leave. It sounded like, and that was foolish. Like, he can't be singing to me. He doesn't even know me like that. So. <laughs> 40 years later. Actually, it's 42 years later. Because we dated for four years. So 42 years later, you're still here with me. I'm and, still here. And I'm, she told me. I'm planning a vacation. And I said, when you leave, I'm, I'm planning a mental you. break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's right. See y'all. We're going out on my music for my one man show. Come see it. Thank you, Charles, uh, for coming to the one man show. We're going to get to October 21st. Where we Bring your lady you. back. Bring your lady. Tell everybody you know. Anyway, here we go. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you.